the entire medicine i did from speed uh, from uh, top to bottom like the every uh, lecture of the speed i did uh, then medical gastro apart from the lectures i also focused on slesinger sir yeah i bring in all the wishes and greetings on behalf of all the faculty members of speed medical institute to dr subham gurg for scoring a topmost rank of cml rank number 3 aml rank number 5 in a super specialty of dm medical gastroenterology in any ss session april 2024 congratulations to you, doctor thank you so much Excellent. Now, can you know a brief background about Dr. Subham? Yes, sir. Myself, Dr. Subham Kar. Uh, I did my undergraduation from uh, GMC Surat, and I did my post graduation from MGM Medical College, Indore. Uh, as soon as I finished my MD, I gave my first attempt of uh, DM, INI of November, and I got qualified in theory, but I didn't qualify for the interview list. So after that, I realized uh, I thought that it's okay from wherever I do, uh, it doesn't matter. So I joined DNB uh, in the very need. uh in delhi only but uh, in 2 3 months i started to realize that okay dnb is not meant for me and i i need to do something better because like when whenever i used to go in the conference i used to meet uh, students of other good colleges the pgi aims and other central institute so there was thing in my mind that i like i'll have to uh, crack that exam first so i left my dnb in 6 months and then i joined a private medical college in bhopal uh, in which i started uh, reading uh, for the medical gastroenterology i and i that's it so very good decision that you have made that you didn't yeah. do what you didn't like that's very important actually and uh, and because you are capable of doing something better and you can get a premier institute and uh, within a span of 3 to 4 months maximum so i appreciate your bold decision because mostly people will feel whether i will get or not I mean will i be able to do or not but that self confidence really commendable okay doctor what is the transit what is the rank that you took last time you qualified what is the rank at the time the 47 sir 47 but not qualified for the interview or yes sir I mean you went for the interview didn't qualify or not called for interview no no i i was not qualified for the interview list only okay right so now cml3 they have to they have to call there's no other way they have to call you yes and <laughs> they have to give you a seat because you are deserving a student right very good can you tell us the transition from what was in 40s and now in top 3 sir i think the only difference which made from 47 to 3 is consistency i think so ki what i was doing that time i almost continued uh, obviously like so with some changes but the consistency was the main thing you know which i focused on and that led to that was a main journey from 47 to 3 to be very frank sir and uh, apart from that uh, sir uh, uh, like few things which i realized much later which i've uh, I just really want to share few things that the mistakes I did when I was when I got a forty seven rank. First was general medicine, which okay. is very very important. Yeah, the game changer for me was general medicine because when I uh, was qualified in my first attempt of INI, I just read gastro. In my second attempt also, I just read gastro. That was a big mistake. So this time only I did uh, general medicine quite uh, uh, extensively, and that was the that is the all the difference that made actually so this time. So yes, that was one thing. Which but that is the reason of the transition, sir. You can say. So how many months you are in DNB? The six months. So you are studying along with that, right? No, no, sir. Six months I didn't study at all. I, actually, I was the only resident in that uh, hospital. Hmm. So I got uh, the entire colonoscopy, endoscopy, and all the procedures I got. So hmm. one thing that DNB did good was made me realize that the only branch I want is gastro only. <laughs> But it also made me realize that uh, this is not the college I want to be in. and that that's why i made the decision sir yes, doctor sir. can you tell us the preparation how did you uh, plan your preparation what are the preparation strategy yes sir uh, sir actually um, i started uh, i divided the time according to what is the uh, pattern of the paper only like 70% i used to do medical gastro medical gastro and 30% i used to do medicine only the entire medicine i did from speed uh, from uh, top to bottom like the every uh, lecture of the speed i did uh then medical gastro apart from the lectures i also focused on slesinger sir slesinger tables and charts that was the first part in second half i realized ki uh, this is the this like the maximum people are doing the same so like to get an extra edge i have to do less important parts of uh, slesinger as well like the quest previous years questions everybody knows that you have to do previous year questions and previous years mcqs but some less important topics which will give you an extra edge that is also very important so apart from uh, very important topics of slesinger all the charts of slesinger tables of slesinger some important uh, questions some important topics of the uh, slesinger and less important topics also which i figured out to, uh, when i was doing the test series sir. okay that's it yeah 
So you completed the entire 21st edition of uh, Harrison based classes. Uh, yes, sir. Harrison based classes almost, almost sir, not a hundred percent, sir. But uh, actually, uh, sir, I have joined a medical college. So firstly, I used to do those things, those uh, cases and those topics of That's which I've seen the patient. So, and I used to apply that in my medical college also. So that is one way, very good way of learning, sir. You will never forget like the topic you have learned on the patient. Apart from that, daily I used to give a few hours for medicine. And I used to do as much as possible, like as I was able to do. Uh, one month before the exam, I stopped doing anything new. And I just, for one month, I just revised multiple times as much as I, I was able to do. Although there were so many things left, but uh, I did as much as possible. Sir. Very nice, doctor. Now, uh, can you tell us how many questions did you attend this exam? Uh, sir, uh, out of 80, I attended 74 questions, sir. Six questions, like I have no clue, like not even a single option. I had no clue. Uh, three options I attempted, uh, two questions, like of which uh, I had no clue of two options, I mean, and two options I was aware of. So that 50% chance I was having, ki I have the probability of 50%. So those questions I attempted, only questions I left uh, in which I had no clue or I, I didn't know about three options or more. Okay. So 74 questions. Can you tell us something on the interview part? I mean, my experience on interview or preparation. Uh, no, Yes, one thing I realized that I stopped studying after the theory part. I was like, okay, it's uh, too much of study now. I have to stop. And this time what happened, they only give four days for the interview. And uh, there was so, so much to uh, revise again so, uh, for the interview. And ISG videos were also there. So one mistake I did that I stopped reading after theory. So that was a very big mistake on my part. So that I would like to suggest to all the people that uh, don't stop studying after the theory. Take one or two days break, no doubt. But then you have to continue that part. Otherwise, you'll miss the finer details of the theory. Uh, so that is one thing. Second thing, ISG videos are very, very important. Another, I didn't know that they are so important that they would have helped me in theory as well. So now I would like to suggest the, the students who are preparing to do the ISG videos beforehand only. That will help you in theory as well as the interview. So apart from this, there's nothing new you can do for the interview. Just the theory you have to revise and the ISG videos you have to do. Great, doctor. Now, what questions did they ask you in the exam interview? interview. Uh, so actually, this time only they have made a new pattern in which they have divided the medical gastro in three parts. One was pancreas, one was hepatic, and the third one was luminal. So the uh, consultants who are like a uh, uh, very uh, masters of their respective uh, part, they did they, they they took the interview, sir. And the first question they give a clinical scenario of like suppose I'll tell you of pancreas, a 55 year old man with chronic alcoholic with recurrent abdominal pain with similar history in the past. And then you have to name the differentials. The, that was the first question. Then they asked me, okay, based on the history, how will you uh, make the diagnosis and how will you localize the disease? So in all the three parts, in whether it's pancreatic, hepatic, or luminal, first thing is a differential diagnosis based on the symptoms. Third is what are the questions questions you will ask to the patient based on the symptoms to localize the disease of that particular part. So that is one important thing that you have to, and that is very well given in Schlesinger uh, uh, symptomatology as well as Harrison symptomatology. So you don't have to miss the Harrison symptomatology also, so that part. Okay. Doctor, what is the message that you want to give to the aspirants of DM uh, gastroenterology superficiality? Uh, sir, yes, sir. Uh, sir, I think uh, first is that it is achievable because like majority majority of the students who, who are from tier two colleges like me thinks that okay these uh, seats are just for the uh, students who have been into a central institute or a daily institute so please uh, i don't think so that you should focus on that part which you cannot help about and you should focus on things you can do about so that thing you should you should forget that uh, you cannot do it so you can do it you have to be more consistent. You have to uh, get put a, a little extra work, but it's very much achievable. Second is please don't forget general medicine. Without general medicine, you cannot get into medical gastro. That is the one hard thing I learned. And third is you have to be updated because even Schlesinger is not uh, the ultimate book which will get you through the exam. Uh, you have to have uh, updates from up to date as well as from Google and other, other stuff. Great, doctor. Now, time to thank whom all you want to thank that they have uh, built your career so far. Yes, sir. sir. Firstly, my parents, no doubt about that. And then especially my friends whom, with whom I have been studying, whom, who have been at a distance to me, but still they have helped me on phones. So these uh, people I actually really want to help my friends and my family. Sir. Great. Doctor, once again, we wish you all the very best and all the success for a great career in uh, gastroenterology. You. And uh, as a gastroenterologist, you will definitely... 
have a very strong contribution uh, to your uh, department itself and to your speciality itself and also you will serve so many patients they come to you thank wish you all the best thank you.